pretty much a miracle child because if your AFib and Wolf Parkinson White was activated at the same time, you would have just dropped dead. This is Jarrell Stallworth, known as Jay Stallworth, and this is no exception. This video is meant to motivate other people to pursue and keep going and never giving up. And this is the reason why, and I would like to tell you that I've suffered from a rare heart disease called Wolf Parkinson White. I want you to die. That was my biggest fear of the life. Cause mom had it, then you had it. So it was like, it was a lot for me. Um, I was alone in an apartment with my dog, minding my own business, watching TV. Then all of a sudden my heart started racing. I couldn't breathe and the same thing that happened. This time I was closer to death than anything. I was so freaking scared. My dog was panicking. My dog didn't know what was going on. Like I was just, going down I I had no control of my body next thing you know I fell down to the ground laid on the ground and I was looking at my dog my dog was crying barking going crazy going back and forth to the screen door and coming back to me screen door and back so you called me I had just finished a client I was at a store and you were saying that your, your chest was hurting you was like you couldn't breathe or whatever and so I was like, okay, I'm on my way because I couldn't reach anybody. So I'm in, I was in Vallejo at the time. <clears throat> you was in Fairfield. I think I did. I think I got to Fairfield like in 10 minutes. I was doing like 105 on the freeway to get there. Once I got there, Andre was getting dropped off from school. And he looked at me and he was like, what are you doing here, auntie? And I was like, Jarrell. And before I could say anything, he ran up the stairs. And I walked in and I seen Jarrell on the floor. And my dog was like sitting right next to him. And I had to call 911 real quick and like, you know, calm him down, give him some water. And he had to go sit down somewhere. And yeah, and I told my mom. And I had to ride in an ambulance with him too, back to North Bay. And they had to do more tests and, you know, draw his blood and all that. You know, when I ended up figuring out about what it was, I was a little bit scared at first, you feel me? But then, you know, I knew you was going to be good because you feel me. Your pop's strong, you strong, you know what I'm saying? Like, your whole family's strong. So I knew you was going to be all right, nigga. You a warrior. Got home, suffered a lot of panic attacks. Like, literally, those moments are literally many heart attacks. My personality, my mind was gone. It wasn't who I am anymore. And to the point where when I had this problem, it just to myself. I didn't want to hang with nobody. I didn't want to just talk to anybody. I was just gone. I was, I had no courage to move on. I had no courage to do this, do that. Until this one day, I got the chance to go to Stanford Hospital. I was blessed and scared in the same time for Stanford to call me up and offered me research and to do the surgery in, in there. And so when he told me that um, once he fixed the Wolf Parkinson White and your AFib was on the other side of the heart, they told us that we had to sign a consent just in case they would have to pierce through your heart to get to the other side to fix the AFib. And doing that is, is, you know, it's very dangerous because when they pierce through your heart, you can have excessive bleeding and you can die from that. That was just in case they couldn't get around your heart from how they had insert the um, wires in through your neck into your legs. He said that they will try to go around it and they will let us know. In all actuality, I, I, I have faith in, in the particular hospital you were in. You were in Stanford, you know what I'm saying? And, they, and I know they uh, pretty much have some of the best uh, cardiologists and things of that nature, man. I was, but, but yet and still, I was, I was scared, man, as a father. You know, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to lose my son. You know, I just. It, it was eye opening. You know, very, very much so, very eye opening. And I just wanted you to pull through. How that feels? Like, I personally don't really know how that feels. I haven't had really somebody that's I'm really close to pass away yet. And I'm think I'm thankful for that. Just you know, when I got that call, I was juiced. I was relieved that he was still here with us. And, yeah, he was on the phone, laughing it up, like nothing happened, which is good. Pray to God it won't come back, because that thing is a freaking nightmare, but it taught me so many things. It taught me how to be grateful for the small things, 
be grateful for the for the people around you that actually talk to you that actually love to be in your presence or just simply just saying hi I'm grateful for that for someone to say hi or someone to say you know bye or how your day is going people really do take that for granted you shouldn't take it for granted you know people tell you not to do but you believe in your heart that you can do it pursue it and please do it you have no time to waste literally my time is very valuable whenever they try to ask you for let's say music videos they say for anything commercial work or something like that my time is more important than anything else people that are dragging you along just ignore them if they just drag you along ignore them unless they really trying to pay up so be with someone that actually is worth your time because time is very valuable and I almost lost mine it's not a joke to really play around with seriously not a joke at all if you want to do something do it with your full mind and power into it